So in a previous video, I went over some of the basic search operators for Logos Bible software. And today I just want to walk you through a few more of these so that you can just increase your efficiency, either searching Bible passages or searching through your library of books. So what I'm going to do is go over to the search function again. I'm going to start with the different uh, things that you can do in the Bible searches, although many of them carry right over to your book searches as well. The good thing about Logos Bible software is because of the extensive tagging of subjects and speakers and, and things like that, you have a little bit more power with your Bible searches. So the first very basic kind of search that you can do is the AND operator, which is capital A-N-D. So if you want to see two words together, instead of just searching for the word Christ, let's see, it shows up 533 times in the English Standard Version. And I should note that you can change which version of the Bible you're looking at. You can, depending on how many translations you have, you can look at multiple at the same time. For now, I'm just going to stick to English Standard Version. So if we search for Christ, we get 533 results. But if we want to see Christ and Jesus in the same verse, we just do Christ, capital A-N-D, Jesus. And now we have 400. And 97 results. Now we can get a little bit more fancy with this. One of the great things about Logos, like I said, is, is the tagging. So there's going to be a lot of verses where Christ is acting or speaking or something where his name is not actually in the verse. So you can actually type in person colon Jesus. So I'm going to choose this option right here. There's different Jesuses, um, but the main one we're looking at is this first one up here. And now we're going to get all of the verses where he is referenced, whether or not they use his name. Sometimes he's referenced as the son of God or the son of David. Sometimes he's the speaker and you're going to get all of these. So you can combine this with, with the and operators. Let's say you want to see every verse where Jesus and a certain character of the Bible is in the same spot. So every verse where you see Jesus and Peter. So I'm going to do person colon Peter. And we're going to have every interaction between Peter and Jesus. There's another uh, way you can get more specific here. Instead of doing every time Jesus and Peter are in the same verse, you can look up every time Jesus speaks to Peter. And the way to do that is to, instead of using the person, you're going to do addressee. Addressee Peter. I'm going to click on this. And this is going to tell us every time that Jesus speaks to Peter. You can do this with all sorts of other things. So let's say, for example, we want to see every time that Elisha, the prophet... Elisha the prophet speaks to um, Gehazi, his servant. Now, instead of just doing the person operator, we can make it more specific. We can say speaker, Elisha, and then we're going to do and, and operator, and we're going to do addressee, Gehazi. Let's see what pops up. We have 41 results for Elisha speaking to Gehazi. You can narrow this right down. So this is is very useful. Uh, we did Bible studies recently. We wanted to find out every time that Abraham is spoken to by God. So we just type in address E, Abraham, and speaker, God. So we have every verse where God speaks to Abraham. Now, what if I wanted to make this um, sort of a more broad search? I want to know not only every time that God speaks to Abraham, but also I want to include that time where Melchizedek speaks to Abraham because he is sort of a representative of God. So what we can do here is after this and, we'll put a left parenthesis there. We'll add another and operator, or excuse me, we'll add an or operator. So we can have either speaker God or speaker Melchizedek. And then I'm going to put the right parenthesis. So now we're going to find every instance where Abraham is spoken to by either God or Melchizedek. So we have the Genesis 14 blessing right in here. So you can get very fancy with this sort of thing. Now, uh, another operator that we want to use is the thing operator. This can be useful in your Bible study if you want to find out every time a certain object or um, uh, class of objects is used. So for example, I want to find out every time the Urim and Thummim are mentioned in the Bible. These are the Stones given to the high priest to divine the will of God. And it looks like we have 10 results for the Urim and Thummim being used. Similarly, I can do thing ephod, which was another religious object used to find out the will of God. And we've got 90 results. So what if I want to find out every time that David is involved with the ephod? Because we know David used this ephod to divine the will of God many times. We'll do thing ephod and 
person, David. Now we can, I should let you know that I can just write and David, and this will tell us every time Ephod and David are in the same verse, but there's going to be some instances where David's name isn't explicitly there, but he's still the person involved with it. So it's better to use person David in that sort of thing. And we're going to get more results doing it that way, especially if it says something like he used the ephod. So the thing operator is very useful. You can do something like um, uh, person Jesus and thing bread. So every time that Jesus is involved with bread, so this will include, th because we're using the thing operator, instead of just using the bare word bread, it's going to include things like loaves and other words that are not exactly the same as bread. Now, what about something like, um, there's an operator here called sense. So I want to look up every time Jesus is involved in cursing. So there's different senses of the word curse. If I just put in the bare word curse, it'll show me instances where Jesus and the word curse are in the same verse. But this will bring up every time that Jesus is involved with enacting a curse. So we see no results for the enact sense of the word. How about this one, invoking harm? Oh, Mark eleven twenty one. and Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So the sense of cursing as an in invoking harm, we do have one result where Jesus is involved. And um, here's another instance, to be cursed as a state of being in Matthew 25, 41. Uh, and Jesus says, and then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire. So you can really get specific with different senses behind the words because Logos has done all the hard work of breaking that down for us. Um, let's see, another operator that we want to use is the before operator. So let's say you want to find out all the times that we see Jesus Christ, but not all of the times we see Christ Jesus. So what we can do is we can type in Jesus before and we have to decide how many words before. If you do one to one, that means it can only be one word before. So Jesus before, I guess we don't actually have to decide the amount of words. So we can do this anytime Jesus is before Christ. But if you want to narrow it down, you can do one, two, three words. So before one to three words behind Christ. So if you can have Jesus, the Christ or Jesus who is Christ, but you can't have Jesus and then like 10 or so words and then Christ. But if you want to expand it, you can make that any amount of words that you want, one to 10 words. If you just do one to one, it'll have to be the word right before. Um, some other operators that we want to use is, um, another one is the not operator. So if you want to see every time that a verse has the word Jesus, but not, the word Christ in it, Jesus, not Christ is what you can type in capital N O T. You'll find all those verses because oftentimes Jesus and Christ are used together, but other times it's used with just Christ. And now we can do the other way around. All you have to do is type in Christ, not Jesus. You'll find all the times that Christ is used where Jesus is not in the same sentence. You'll see a lot of Paul's epistles for this sort of thing. I also want to show the power of this in searching our books. So I'm just gonna have a search for all of our books as I use the not operator. Let's say, for example, I wanna find out John Wesley and his thoughts about ghosts. I'm gonna come up with a problem right away. I'm gonna type in Wesley and ghosts. Let's see what pops up. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that if you type in a plural of a word, it's gonna search the singular as well. And this is gonna bring up many instances of the phrase Holy Ghost. Obviously, if John Wesley is talking about the Holy Ghost, that's not really what I'm looking for. So what I can do to solve this is I can do one of two things. One is I can use quotation marks. If you use quotation marks, it'll search the exact term without doing the plural. It'll only do that version. So you can do ghosts. So it will not search the word ghost in the singular. So you can see some results here of where ghosts are referenced. But if you want to be really specific and make sure you're not um, mixing it up with Holy Ghost or something like that, you can do and um, ghost, but I'm putting a left parenthesis there. So it'll be Wesley and any instances of ghost, but not what I don't want is Holy Ghost. This will exclude any result that has the term Holy Ghost in the results. So now I'm going to get very specific. I can do the singular and plural of ghosts while avoiding the Holy Ghost 
So this is going to get me really specific results with that sort of thing. So these are just some of the powerful operators that you can use, whether you're searching for in your book library or in your Bible. This really speeds up uh, if you're looking for a certain number of times that a word is used. Let's say, for example, just to close out with the example of sin affecting the land. Um, what if I want to find out all the times that sin affects the land? I'm going to type in sin and land and I get 36 results. But really, there's different nuances to this. So I'm going to make it sin and land or earth or ground. So anytime sin in one of these three terms is used, now I'm up to 50 results. But sin is uh, has some synonyms, other words that have the same concept. So I'm going to do introduce the left parenthesis here. I'm going to do sin or iniquity or tr trans aggression. Now, anytime that one of these class of words and one of these classes of words is used in the same sentence, I'm going to get a result for that. So now I've got 105 verses to work with where it seems that sin or in transgression is affecting the land. This can um, be very powerful, uh, more so than you'll find in a simple cross-reference system in your Bible. And it really goes a long way to helping you get the results you're looking for. And there are more operators. You can simply go down here and look at the list of the different things. I didn't even get into the um, original language lemmas that you can put in there, especially for people that have a smattering of Greek and Hebrew. You can avail yourselves of those. But this should go a long way to getting you started with taking advantage of the search operators in Logos.